Hello, this is Anna Pacheco, SantaFe101.com. My guest today is Melinda Ellen, and she is the CEO of New Mexico Partnerships. Uh, Melinda, do I have your permission to record this interview? Yes. Oh, Please good. Go so tell me, did I did I get the correct name of the organization? Or tell me, go ahead and start off. Introduce yourself. I, you'll, you'll, you'll do a better job. Sure, no problem. So my name is Melinda Allen, and I am the president and CEO of the New Mexico Partnership. And we are the state's business marketing and recruiting arm. And what that means is that we have been designated by the state to do all of their business recruiting. So trying to recruit businesses to come and locate inside of the state of New Mexico. And so that, and, that's our role. And so, and you've been in existence for how long now? So we, the partnership's been in existence since about 2003. We were set up originally by the Richardson administration. And so we've kind of grown and evolved since that time frame, and have been doing business recruiting um, since that time. And, and how long have you been with the organization? I've been with the New Mexico Partnership for just over three years now. Um, previously, I was serving as the Vice President of Business Development and then as Interim President for the last 10 months. And then just recently in March, the board selected me as the new president. Well, congratulations. And so I know you've, you know, um, since it started back in 2003, can you give me the history of the organization? Like since that time, how many businesses have, have you recruited? How many people have come here? That's 2003 to now, that's a good almost 18 years, 17 mm -hmm. going on 18 years. So tell me a little bit about the progress that the organization has made since its inception. Absolutely. So um, every year is just a little bit different on the number of projects and the type of projects that come into New Mexico. And that more has to do with national markets and national trends. Um, and so we've seen, I think, a steady amount of projects um, year over year. Some years are better, some are not, just depending on the overall economy. Um, most recently, um, I can and talk about some of the most recent announcements. So um, companies like Ganymede Games, which is a video game um, company that has come in, um, Admiral Cable, which is a Taiwanese cable company. We've actually had three Taiwanese companies in the last 18 months, which is very exciting for us. Um, we see food manufacturing, um, a lot of aerospace, um, uh, Kairos Energy in Albuquerque is a recent one. Um, Faneuil, which is a customer care center um, that came in as well in the past year or so. Um, so it's, it's a variety of different projects. And I think that's what makes New Mexico so interesting and so exciting to represent as the partnership is there's such a diversity of industry base and such a need for jobs at every skill level. So it provides a really great opportunity um, to recruit a large variety um, of different types of businesses and have seen that be very successful. Um, and so we're, I think as the years progress as an organization, we become more sophisticated, um, try to recruit really top talent to help us uh, fulfill our mission and, and really starting to see um, good success and good return on those marketing and relationships that we're building. Economic development is very much a relationship um, type of business. And so we work with a group of probably over 700 consultants um, around the world who represent companies and industries and really work with them to uh, present New Mexico to a whole pipelines of projects all of the time. And so every day we're, we're talking about New Mexico and talking to businesses and trying to get them to understand who we are, what we can offer and the great opportunities that they have um, should they choose to locate here. Well, tell me a little bit, try and sell me on New Mexico. What are some of the opportunities? Why would, why should a company uh, think about moving to New Mexico? Absolutely. So uh, to start off with, New Mexico is in such a great strategic location within the U.S., right? Where we're located, you can hit 75% of the U.S. population within a one or two day drive. Um, and so that's great when you're trying to deliver product or distribute materials, trying to hit all of your supply chain. Um, it's a great connectivity. We also have great interstate 
and railroads um, that connect us to the rest of the world. Um, so you, when you talk about locating in New Mexico, you can talk about accessing the world and, and really being connected at that very um, important level that's very important to making sure you're, you're hitting your markets and, and your supply chain. Um, also in New Mexico, it's um, cost advantageous for, for companies to come and locate here. Um, you know, we're, we're in that region of fastest growth, um, kind of that Midwest US area, but our prices haven't gone um, maybe so crazy as like the Austins or the Denver's or even now kind of the, the Phoenixes or the Reno's. And so that initial cost of entry into a new market um, is very favorable for New Mexico. So employers can come here, they can still get the talent they want. Um, we have talent across gosh, every level from the very highly skilled PhD level um, scientist to, to some of the entry sk level skilled or technical skilled um, levels. And so there's a good breadth of opportunities um, in addition to, you know, the, the research labs. They're a huge bonus for us in New Mexico with Sandia, Los Alamos, Air Force Research Labs. Um, the talent that they bring, the opportunity um, that they bring, that is a huge selling point. Our universities are a huge selling point with the talent that they're turning out, the programs that they offer, um, some of the research that they're doing, the testing capabilities that they have. Um, Spaceport America is, is a big one. Um, it's Aerospace is a big industry right now. We're seeing a lot of projects. I think three or four within the last month have asked questions about New Mexico. And so all of these things really help to draw attention to New Mexico and provide that ecosystem that these, these companies really need and want to feel like they can get the talent they need, the support they need, kind of that, that mindset and that energy of having similar companies, but not too much competition um, to really be successful and be able to grow and expand their business here. So there's lots of opportunities. And again, like I mentioned, our industry base is pretty diverse. So if you wanna do something very highly technical in aerospace, you can find a home here. If you wanna do something that's value added agriculture or food manufacturing, you can find a home here. If you wanna do heavy industrial or energy renewables, um, advanced manufacturing, you can find a home here because we have those industry bases, we have those ecosystems, we have that labor and talent. Um, and there's great opportunities for companies to come and be a part of that. Well, you, you know, you mentioned uh, that um, the cost of entry into New Mexico was lower than some of the major cities in the Southwest. So what does the cost of entry mean? You know, the brick and mortar or, I mean, just tell me a little bit about what it costs to be here. And, and does the, the state of New Mexico say, you know, I want this, you know, we definitely want this, these type of companies here. We're going to provide them with tax incentives or how do you, how, so I guess that's two questions. It's like, what is their entry cost? And then what type of incentives is the state um, uh, providing to get people here? Absolutely. So the cost of entry, it, it covers a variety of different things. So part of it is, is cost of land, cost of building. It's also the cost of labor. Um, and it's, it's that, um, cost of living as well. So our cost of living is below below the national average. Um, our cost of labor can be anywhere between um, five and 30% less than some markets, um, especially if those on the West and East Coast. Um, uh, depending on the type of facility you're looking at, um, your, your cost of building is going to be less. Um, land is typically cheaper. So those those initial upfront costs when you're starting out building a new facility um, or trying to find an existing space um, can offer offer more building for less or you know lower those um, upfront costs, which can be a big hurdle for some companies that are starting out. Um, as far as incentives go, New Mexico has a wide suite of statutory incentives that have been put together to really to help businesses of all shapes and sizes. Um, and so for those employers creating economic based jobs, and what that means is they're getting more than 50% of their revenues from outside of the state, right? So we're bringing outside dollars into the state of New Mexico. Then there's the job training incentive program, which is 
a reimbursement of wages during a new hire's training period, um, which is very um, attractive and is one of the highest ranked training incentive programs in the US. Um, so that has always been very favorable. We have a high wage jobs tax credit. So if you're paying above um, the average wages and in, in an urban area, it's more than 60,000. If you're in a rural area, it's more than 40,000. You can take um, a, um, a tax uh, incentive for that. Um, we also have additional incentives for creating jobs in rural areas. Um, New Mexico allows communities to offer industrial revenue bonds. And really what that is, it's a tool to offer some property tax abatements on our already very low property taxes. Um, and so that can be very attractive for companies that are coming in, especially for new large builds. Um, the state also offers LIDA, which is our Local Economic Development Act. This is a discretionary reimbursable um, grant fund that helps to reimburse some of the costs of that building land infrastructure improvement. And so this is um, depends on uh, how much capital expenditure the company is going to make, how many jobs they're creating, what type of um, salaries they're paying. And so they kind of weigh all of those factors to determine the appropriate level of incentive for those. And then some of our local community, sorry, I'll, I'll finish no. off real quick because I know you have another question. Um, some of our local communities have additional incentives that they may be able to layer on top. And I think what's so great about New Mexico is that as your company grows and expands, you can use these incentives. So if you establish here, you can use the incentives. If you expand here, you can use the incentives. And a lot of states um, may not allow you to use the incentives as you grow and expand. So even if you've been a business here in New Mexico for 20 years and you need to expand, you can take advantage of these same incentives. So I think it's a great opportunity and support to grow all industries in New Mexico. And do you actually have people on the ground when, a, like say a company has been here for 15 years, do you have people on the ground that go and say the XYZ company and say, you know, we realize you want to start expanding now and now you can take advantage of these different things? Because if you've been around since 2003 and you just mentioned a company has been here for 20 years, that means they would have been here before this, your organization actually was created. How would that work? Mm -hmm. How do you let these businesses know that, hey, we're out here and, you know, we know you've been here a while, but we want you to, we want you not only to stay, we want you to expand this is what we want to offer you. How do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. So in New Mexico, we partner with a lot of organizations. So our the partnership, the New Mexico partnership, we are strictly responsible for being the recruiters to recruit businesses to come inside the state. So if you're an existing building or an existing company, there are people within the New Mexico State Economic Development Department, our regional representatives, who make those, we, we call them business retention and expansion meetings, right? So they're meeting with those local businesses. They also work with the local economic development teams to make sure that those organizations understand the incentives, um, have that conversation and, and about, about expansion um, and any other issues that they may be maybe having. And so we kind of, we work as a team, even though we have our individual roles um, within the overall economic development system, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay, good. And then um, you were talking about that labor tends to be lower here than some of the, you know, mm -hmm. urban areas, but some of these jobs like at um, the, you know, Los Alamos National Lab or Sandia, some of these, um, you know, some of these jobs require like, you know, highly skilled workers. So I would imagine they're not working for peanuts out here. I mean, yeah. how do you, so how yeah. does that work? Absolutely. Well, I think a lot of it ties back into that quality of life and cost of living um, because often um, pay scales are reflective a little bit of the cost of living in your communities. Um, in the case where we have, you know, extremely highly talented, skilled uh, folks in, P, uh, in PhD level for, for Los Alamos and those types of jobs, um, I mean, they, they're being paid a very fair high wage. 
Um, and in that instance, we might not be a cost savings, um, but uh, overall, when you look across averages across industries, there is, is that so the savings. quality of life. And then, so I remember way back when, so, so Santa Fe is my hometown, I've been here forever. And I back in the early 1970s, um, um, uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates, he actually started in Albuquerque, I believe in a garage or something, but he then moved his company, I believe, to Seattle because he could not find an educated workforce. So that was the 1970s. That's 55, mm -hmm. almost 60 years ago or whatever it is, 50 years for sure. So how has that changed? How are we, how is New Mexico being able to position itself on a national level in terms of having an educated workforce to, to attract companies to want to start businesses here? Absolutely. So it it's really a whole system, right? So there's several different elements. You can't just do one thing. You have to have a very broad approach um, when you talk about um, having that skilled workforce. It's everything from starting technical training programs, even at the high school level, right? So you're getting some of those early skilled um, early certificate level. It's working with the junior colleges who are so great at partnering with industry to make sure the programs and certificates um, and degrees that they're offering match what the industry actually needs. And so they're very tied into um, skill training and up, up skills and different um, everything that's going on, especially right now, as everything is kind of move, moving more and more automated. Um, instead of standing on a line, you may now need to be able to monitor equipment and be able to, um, you know, assess a, an equipment issue and, and have those kind of technical skills. And so our technical universities are working on those types of programs and opportunities. And then again, at the university level, it's creating those programs and pipelines of students in those degrees where where that talent is needed. And, and we see that um, over and over again with creation of like the video game departments in both in Albuquerque and down in Las Cruces, where they're turning out some of these new, very technical, highly skilled design, computer-based programming um, type of talent. And then again, it's partnering with the economic development folks so that we have a place for, this, for these people to go. Um, I think New Mexico has always turned out great talent. I think where it's hard is keeping that talent here. Um, I think I think that's the hard part is is making sure that we have enough of the types of jobs that our highly skilled talent wants to make sure that they stay inside New Mexico. And then you also mentioned that you know our land is cheaper here, and I know for our, for for sure here in Santa Fe and throughout northern New Mexico, land is not cheaper. So, um, is are a lot of these businesses you mentioned that are you know you like new newly arrived businesses? Are they are they are they being uh, located like mostly in Albuquerque or in southern part of the state, or where where are they kind of like starting to to uh, what's the word I want to use? They're starting to 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 grow. Where are they growing their businesses? It really depends on the type of industry um, because, you know, the number one thing they want to look for is talent and then they want to look for an ecosystem that supports their industry. So, you know, a large food manufacturer that may have semi-skilled or lower skilled talent probably won't look at or consider Santa Fe right now just because the cost of talent is a little bit higher, but they may go somewhere south. Um, south, in southern New Mexico. Um, but just recently, we did a very um, high tech software ba based medical company, Bicycle Health, and they specifically wanted Santa Fe because they wanted that connection and that talent and that, that atmosphere. So it really depends on what that company is looking for. And, you know, at, at the community level, it's understanding who you are as a community and what your goals for growth are as a community. Because not every community in New Mexico wants the same type of industry and growth, right? Everyone has a little bit different feel for how they want to see their community to grow and develop. And so it's, it's matching those opportunities with what the community sees um, as how they wanna see their future. Um, and so we're seeing growth all, kind of all around the state, um, uh, you know, our, highly populated areas probably get a larger proportion um, of the larger projects, but there's, there's great opportunity um, throughout the state.
And as an organization, do you like, do you have like a certain criteria? Like you'll only try to woo companies that are going to hire a hundred people or more, or what, what is, is there a company size that you're interested in or? We work with um, projects of all sizes. I would say mm, between 30 and 40% of our projects have 50 or less employees. Um, but we, we've worked with as few as two or five employees and as many as two or 3000 employees. Wow. So it's, you know, we, we across the whole gamut across pretty much every industry sector um, that creates economic based jobs. Okay. And so I know that our, the film industry, that's, that's a good, this is a good example. I know that we're always competing with Georgia to get more business here. So do you, are there any states, you know, that, that you are competing with like more so than others? I mean, I'm just curious. Yeah. Again, sometimes that goes back to the industry sector. Um, so, you, you know, film, right. Georgia and Canada right now are real hot, hot areas for, for film. Um, oftentimes it's, they want something west of the Mississippi. And so that may mean we're competing with everyone west of the Mississippi, or it may be they consider um, New Mexico versus a Call Georgia that. or a North Carolina, right? So it really just depends on, it depends on the industry. Um, there's not any one state that is more competitor than, than the others. It just really depends on, on the type of project. So, I mean, obviously we compete often with Texas and Colorado and Arizona because they're our nearest neighbors and we're kind of in that same region. Um, but we just as often compete against California or Washington or Georgia or North Carolina. Um, well, all of those states you just mentioned, you know, in, in reality, we are less expensive than just about all of those states, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're out of time here, but is there anything you wanted to include um, or say about, um, if somebody's watching this, uh, this video about, you know, their a company's thinking of moving here or, is there anything you want to end with in terms of them? Of course, I'll put your contact details. But is there anything you want to end with in this video? Sure. I mean, we're happy to have a conversation with any company that wants to learn more about New Mexico and how they can come and locate here and help them through that process. We are a private nonprofit um, organization, so all of our services are free and confidential. And so companies who need that assistance with finding sites in New Mexico, we're their single point of contact to help them find all the answers that they need to come and success, successfully locate here. Well, you know, I want to thank you again, uh, Melinda Allen with the New Mexico Partnership. And this has been, this is a great interview for me in the sense that, you know, people that are, you know, that do already have a company, maybe they don't know that you exist. And I'm, I'm so glad that hopefully through my efforts, they will, I'll bring some attention to your company. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Anna.